Welcome to this section on implementing serverless query and messaging patterns. In the previous section, we covered non-relational and relational databases and how the microservices can be used to integrate with them. What we will do in this section is discuss events, messaging, and queries, which are also important features in a modern scalable architecture. So in this section, I will build on those previous sections and we'll talk about implementing serverless query and messaging patterns. We will also specifically talk about the simpler API composition, as well as the more complex CQRS pattern, which are used to implement queries in microservices. These are commonly used for integrating between other microservices and with legacy services, as well as external third-party services. In this section, we are going to look at the API gateway and API composition patterns, how these can be implemented in a serverless environment. Then we will discuss event sourcing and command query responsibility segregation, or CQRS patterns. We will then discuss the architecture and how they can be implemented. So first, we will discuss the serverless event sourcing pattern and then the implementation of the event sourcing pattern. Then we will discuss the architecture of the CQRS pattern and how that can be implemented in a serverless stack. And finally, we will talk about how you can secure your event stream and queries. Welcome to this video on API Gateway and API Composition Patterns. In this video, we are going to take a look at the API gateway pattern, the API composition pattern, the benefits and drawbacks of the API composition pattern. The API gateway pattern is used when you need an external facing API so that an external service only needs access to one endpoint to make any of the requests. This service is responsible effectively for routing any requests from outside the corporate firewall, but also things like monitoring and maybe throttling of the request calls, for example. It can help reduce the latency of the request, for example, via caching very frequent requests. It can also act as a mechanism to authenticate users and services to make sure they're authorized to make the actual request in the first place. Finally, it acts as an abstraction to finer grain microservice APIs, allowing you effectively to have a proxy so that the underlying services can be changed without affecting any external services. The main idea of the API composition pattern is to retrieve data from multiple sources, effectively abstracting the implementation of more granular services for the client. So effectively, on the right, we have the API Composer, and it's going to make a request to other services which hold the data. So here it's going to make a request to the Customer Order Microservice, the Customer Support Microservice, and the Customer Details Microservice. And it could be doing a join. For example, it could be joining the data in memory and then returning that data to the original requester. So some of the recommendations are that when you invoke the service, it's better if those calls of the API Composer are done in parallel where possible. This will make it much more efficient and especially it doesn't, it makes more sense as if you have no dependencies amongst the calls themselves. So it can be done in parallel rather than one after the other sequentially. The other recommendation I have is to monitor the latency. So as this is composition, it might be too slow and impact the client performance. So it's important to keep an eye out for it. So even if it's an asynchronous call from a user interface, if the response takes more than one second, it's not going to be very responsive for the user. So the benefits and drawbacks of the API composition pattern. So the benefits are that it's very easy to understand. You can actually reuse your existing microservices and their APIs, and it's very flexible. So for example, you can do a join between two different domains. The drawbacks are that 
it does have an impact on the query latency, especially when you compare it to an SQL database join, which is heavily optimized to join different tables together. And that's, for example, something we could have used if we had one shared database and many make microservices requesting from there. It also has an effect of reducing the availability of your system. As you have so many dependencies on the API and different APIs or granular APIs that you're calling, it makes it brittle to any changes of any of the called microservices. In addition, you introduce weaker consistency as there's effectively another layer for processing the data, adding an extra delay. And I'd say it's not suitable for large scale amounts of data or joining of data. So generally a much preferred pattern is CQRS, which we will talk about later on in this section.